and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is about the Humsink lithium ion phosphate 12 volt 150 amp hour, which brings us to a total of 1920 watt hours. This video is purely about this battery today. We'll just look at this and it's great to see this battery comes in a group 31 housing. That's how it's delivered. It comes with M8 bolt. It comes actually with two sets, one longer, one shorter. It does come with the Humsync user manual as well. We will look at the parameters in here, but also we'll reference what they actually advertise on the website or maybe Amazon, what's pretty common to being used those days. So that's about the battery. Let's jump right into the specification. Let's see what this battery is capable of. And therefore I wanna, um, as I mentioned, wanna look at the user manual. At the user manual when, manual, when you look here in this column, you can see that the standard maximum continuous charge is 30 slash 110 amp. So the standard is 30 and 110 is the maximum continuous charging, but the maximum continuous discharge in the, in the row below 110 amp. And the overcurrent discharge protection is at 300 plus minus 50 amp. So, so between 250 amp and 350 amp. Keep that in mind. We can see the weight and the dimensions in pound and in inches. So that makes it easy here for the U US folks. Uh, additionally, I want to talk about a couple other things. Uh, what I found online on the website. I didn't find this on the Amazon website or page yet. But um, they do describe what is pretty cool. It's certified and reliable. It's even UL approved for global safety standards. So that is pretty good to see at the moment out of stock. But nevertheless, um, it's definitely uh, worth it when you look at the price of, what was it? Let me double check if that's still the case. I think on their website, it's $199. That is insane. On Amazon, it's I think over $300 or something. So. If that price is accurate and when it's back in stock, I think that is a nice price. If you ask me for 150 amp hour, if you don't look for a mini version or whatever. So as mentioned, dimension is group 31 housing, standard housing what we had before for 100 amp hour. Oftentimes now we have more capacity pushed into the housing, which is good to see. When it comes to um, safety features, um, the BMS, should have overload protection, over voltage protection, over charge protection, over discharge protection, low temperature protection, and short circuit protection. The only thing what I don't see is a over uh, temperature, high temperature protection here. Uh, we'll test on both as much as we can, hopefully, when we open it up. Uh, they claim they use A plus cells, prismatic cells, it looks like. Okay, that's good to see. So what else? Uh, one other thing, and I, I, by the way, I do like this picture with the great ASL. So I'm always comparing it, but I'm never mentioning it. I'm comparing it uh, if it's actually like that or not. It has a 10 year life and five year warranty. So up to 15,000 plus cycles when you never go below or not less than 50% of depleting or discharging the battery. And they claim it's a 110 amp BMS. Uh, that's also what they point out here, by the way. And they have funny or nice little logos like an RV, a boat, or home solar. Anyways, uh, that's enough about the specification. I would say we'll do a capacity test, a high discharge test to see how much we can actually pull if the 110 amp maximum continuous discharge, uh, we can continuously discharge. And also if we can trigger the overcurrent protection, which with 350 amp, um, might not be possible with my equipment at the moment. So we'll, we'll go there now. The battery monitor is reset. Battery is right behind here. It is connected to this one. So we'll get started with the capacity test. Then I'll get you back in as soon as we're done. All right, around. Point to see a little bit more. Dang, look at that result. We are at 9.9 .9 volts. It's a low voltage disconnect here and we are at 149.92. Running up, it's 150, but it's a little tiny short. If I would have probably went with less than, at the beginning, 0.25C or something, we might have gotten to, you know, 150, a little bit above, a little tiny bit. For the high discharge test, I'm adding the loads. So as we know, maximum continuous discharge current is 110. Yes, yeah, so around this one, that's kind of what it should be normally. Not a problem at all. Let's see how much we can push it. 
Oh, bummer. That was my inverter, yeah. I pushed the inverter too hard. That means I could shut off, but you can see we are pulling 190 amps out of this battery. The continuous discharge current is 110 as of the manual, so keep that in mind. Size your wire and your fuse accordingly, what you want to use it for. And the overall current discharge protection is at 300 or 250 to 350. Keep it in mind, it might not trigger anything. The BMS might not protect it. So there's between 110 and 250 at the very least. You see, it can run. That's high discharge for mine, uh, for what I have here. So I'm not able to pull more or higher current. So um, next time I need to have a better inverter on my end. Anyways, let's continue with the teardown. After seeing the cap capacity test and the high discharge test in one, I wanted to show you all of it, making it as short as possible. I hope you're satisfied with what you see. Keep in mind uh, that you size your wires accordingly and you don't want to overdo it, at least what they rate the BMS for, because otherwise it might overheat and damage the BMS at one point or the cells. Safety first, don't do that at home. All right, it was pretty cool. I got it out and I didn't, didn't see this before, but here we can see um, the SKU number, model, nominal voltage. We can see that as well as date. So it was manufactured, it looks like in March. Pretty cool. And my serial number, but it has um, a lot of glue here around. So that's what it seals. Now we want to look at the unit itself. So let's see, opening it up, there it is. So what do we see? That's the BMS. Here's a screenshot of it. We can see, starting with the most obvious, the terminals, pretty tight, but no clue on those ones, no torque marks or whatsoever, hydraulically crimped. And we do have, in this case, six gauge wires. Yep, six gauge wire on positive, six gauge wire on negative going from the terminal to the BMS. And then from the BMS, which are different locks, very interesting, going routed whoop, to the main negative of the battery of the cell pack and positive here as well. We have some copper nuts over here. I haven't seen that so far. There is clue, by the way, I just see it. Clue is on here on those balance leads over here. Extra packing tape, everything is held in with packing tape. We have the epoxy boards around everywhere. I can see there is thinner. It looks like thinner, uh, yeah, thinner epoxy board in between the cells. There is a temperature sensor over here. It is routed. Oh, that's pretty nice. Let me turn this a little bit more. So you see it here. So the temperature sensor is actually whoop, routed below here in a nice <laughs> black gold red. Those are, by the way, flag colors of Germany. Just want to highlight that. Very important to understand since I'm German, right? And we can see they route it nicely, but used just with packing tape. So holding in place, as we oftentimes see. And then, yeah, we can see actually, let me do this, the cells itself. There we go. Also, we can see all those vents have room to breathe. We have on those bus bars, those three, we have a hum in the middle, so that's really good. So contraction, expansion, were possible, laser weld, weld the terminals here. We have, it looks like bolted in, yeah, with a screw holding in the balance leads. Also, I think it's nice. They're using high density foam. They have a nice cable routing underneath. It's just used a lot of packing tape. That's the cheapest brands, but also it's meant to never open. So if there's a defect within the five years, Ideally, what they should do is just replacing it. So you should never have to deal with it because otherwise you see it is, it is very difficult to open and you will destroy the housing. So there's the temperature sensor. Most likely should be able to do this. QR code, let me see. They claim it's a... So if I'm not mistaken, those are the cells. It looks like I wasn't able to scan it, but I was able to type it in. So because I was able to see it, manufacturing data is 2023 and it says 150 amp hours, so that's good to see as well. It's a typical Chinese solid build. I don't wanna say it is perfectly fine, but at least from what I can see here, they used a little clue, especially here, so to not get the balance leads loose, but not on top, which I'm surprised. They have a good sized wire for the 150 amp, and it's a 100 amp rated BMS. I just saw this written on it, so it's interesting that they label it 110. Uh, I'm not familiar if there's a brand. There's no Bluetooth, by the way, I didn't mention that. 
it doesn't feel like it's loose, but uh, some torque marks would be great. And usually they slap on some glue, so it's never getting loose. Everything else is like packing tape and then epoxy board outside, so it's protected on, on the four sides outside, but not up here and not on the bottom. On the bottom is just high density foam. Uh, there we go. Now we'll do the high temp and low temp protection test. So now you should see it is charging here. 10 amps, and by the way, I still have my stick on, so. Protect the foil, after years of using this, finally I'm taking it off. It's charging, we'll use the heat gun first. Please look over here. Oh, there it is already. It stopped charging, that's exactly what I wanna see. Let's see if it comes back on when. There it is, back charging. Let's do the same with uh, ice cold duster spray. Oh, there it is already. Perfectly fine. So with the duster it works. Duster is going less than 20F. Let's see what ice pack does. Let's see if it is more like the human temperature. Zero to so 32F. Oh yeah, nice. So that's, the ice pack is usually, usually my proof to show this temperature sensor is triggering already earlier than the duster, because duster, that means that it's so ice cold, the cells might be already damaged. But with those ice packs, we have the capability and option to actually showcase zero Celsius 32F and a little bit colder than that usually. So that is good to see that it's probably within five degrees Celsius, I would say. I think this one is pretty straightforward. Um, you could have even, what's pretty cool, you could have even slapped a smaller housing on this one. So 150 amp hour already in this design. This one seems more like a Group 24 size, so you could probably squeeze this in there, maybe. Not 100% certain, but could be possible. So that's pretty cool to see. And let me know what you think about the size, about the build quality as well. In my opinion, it's comparable with other Chinese batteries. If it's $200, I think that's a good price at the moment. And as mentioned, in those Group 31 housings, this much power, that's good to see. I love it. Oh, look at that. It's getting loose a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's here. Oh, interesting. Could get it loose. So probably pressed in from high, dens from the high density form from the top but I don't want to see that. Anyways, subscribe to the channel if you like that stuff. There's more battery stuff coming out, more inverter stuff, what I also have, and more solar. The exciting stuff with solar installations and whatnot on the horizon. So subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified as soon as we start with that. Until then, thanks for watching. Cheers!